Although grade school students had the day off because of the cold, thousands of students at Youngstown State had no such luck. Classes were held as usual today. All students can do is bundle up as best they can. I have four shirts on. <laughs> I have a long john under this, under my turtleneck, and I have two pairs of socks on. It's too cold. There's no way to keep warm. It's way too cold. And the only way we can not come to class without getting like penalty marks from our classes is if they cancel school. Elsewhere, it's no better. People trying to walk quickly to get out of the cold. Shortly after noon, the temperature stood frozen at 6 below, only 4 degrees higher than the record of minus 10, set just before 8 this morning. The old mark was set in 1977. Another casualty of all this cold weather, water line breaks, like this one just off Market Street in Boardman. And area water departments are worried that with all these frigid conditions, the problems are only going to get worse. Already, Youngstown crews have had to fix more than a dozen breaks like this one on Wakefield and Brownlee Woods. For the workers, this is nothing short of miserable. you got to stay warm. It's hard to stay warm. You get you're in and out of the truck all the time. It's no good. you got to stay out with the elements. It's hard to, it's hard to contaminate. That's all. Meantime, area roads remain icy. Even the State Department of Transportation is not immune. One of its vans slid out of control and rolled over on Route 11 in Canfield. No one was hurt. Still, it leaves plenty of work for area tow truck companies. This crew trying to restart a frozen semi. Everybody's not starting. Battery's dead. Uh, door's frozen. Just real, real, uh, real busy. And while we may see some relief by the end of the week, we still have to get through a few more days and nights of near-record cold. Jerry Ricciuti, 33 Eyewitness News. From the very first day, January of 94 showed us no mercy. It snowed on the first half inch and then froze that night, giving us an icy mess on the second. Salt trucks prepared on the third for a big snow that continued through the fourth when eight to 10 inches would fall. Sunshine gave the plows a break on the 5th, but on the 6th and 7th, freezing rain left trucks scattered along area freeways. The overnight low on the 8th was 6, but they still played snowball softball. On the 9th, the low was 4. Again, icy roads and more accidents. On the 10th, 5 below. The 11th, a half inch of snow. And then on the 12th, relief. Some sun and 40 degrees. A little snow on the 13th didn't stop the frostbite foot race in Sharon. Three more inches of snow fell on the 14th, and then it turned cold again. Six below in the 15th, 12 below in the 16th, and the 17th brought the second major snowstorm of the month, seven inches this time. Then the coldest temperatures in 50 years, minus 18 on the 18th, an all-time record minus 22 on the 19th, minus 9 on the 20th, and minus 4 on the 21st. The 22nd through the 26th were the calmest days of the month. But then the 27th and 28th, it rained and rained, an inch and a half in some places. The rain and melting snow caused some roads to close. On Saturday, we received about a quarter inch of snow. Sunday and today were somewhat mild, so mild, in fact, that we saw our first peak of grass this month. Now, for the month, we ended it below normal as far as temperatures are concerned, almost five degrees below normal. Snowfall was above normal. We received over 26 inches of snow, 13 inches above normal and the third snowiest January on record. But it is only January, and there's still plenty of winter yet to come. For Environmental Matters, Stan Boney, 33, Eyewitness News. If you've heard this sound any time this week when you've tried to start your car, you are not the only one. Cold temperatures have killed a lot of batteries, but have meant big business for towing companies. That's very nice. Here at Utzinger's, the phones have been ringing non-stop all week. It's hectic. A couple days behind, really. Uh, running night and day, cold, nobody starts. Even our trucks were having trouble starting. Probably 65, 70 calls a day, maybe. They're busy. Yeah, we get all we can get, 24 hours a day. And here at Neff Company in Canfield, heating and plumbing calls have flooded the phone lines. Service, Patty speaking, may I help you? Calls like that have been coming in for days on end. We have taken probably anywhere from like 80 to 90 calls just yesterday. Um, I left about 5.30 and we continued through the whole night. Um, since Saturday, we have been nonstop. 
Joanne Griffiths of Youngstown called Neff Company when frozen water pipes burst, leaving this gaping hole in her living room ceiling. She had left the taps open, trying to unthaw pipes. The hot water started coming out. It was cold, and then it got warm. And then, evidently, it must have been, you know, when, the, when it started coming out, it must have done something. I don't know. Griffiths still has her work cut out for her, straightening up once repairs are done and pipes fixed. As for the rest of us, with the deep freeze over, at least for now, let's hope the pipes and the batteries get us through the rest of the winter. Naomi Ritz.